Hey there everyone, Jeff Moore here with Capture TV and welcome. We are here downtown for our second annual Capture TV shootout. And it's a little blue as you can see, but it's anything but blue for all of our photographers out here because we have Vanessa Wells back here. She's gonna show us a little bit of a trick with flash and backlighting. So let's gonna pay her a visit here. All right, here we have Vanessa, one of our good friends, and she is here with your model. Ayla. 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 Ayla Modeling. Ayla, if Ayla Modeling. Okay, so tell us what it is that you're going to achieve here, what you're using, and how you're going to apply it. Okay, I'm going to shoot backlighting, so rim lighting, because I really love that effect. I love the, the glow around the hair, and we're going to use a blue gel. A nice. A nice blue gel. Yeah, because yeah, it's obviously she's wearing a black dress. You yes. just want to try to kind of separate her from the background, right? Yes, want to separate the black dress from the background. Okay. I've got the Nikon D610 with my Sigma 2470, my favorite lens. I shoot with all, most of the time. <laughs> I've got my Godox uh, flashes with my Speedbox 60, which I use a lot. Then I've got, for backlighting, I've got another Godox speed light behind her with the blue gel. Now obviously as you're using off-camera flash, yes. you have a little issue with focusing and kind of tell us what your assistant was doing here for you. Nathan, he was shining my camera, my phone light on her face mm -hmm. so I can focus and when I say okay, he drops it so I can take the picture because right. your camera can't focus without light. Right, because um, a lot of cameras use, um, you know, the uh, line of contrast in yes. order to at least determine the depth on it, right? Yes, that's okay. correct. And of course, no light. Hey, what are you going to do? What you can focus on, mm -hmm. okay? Nothing. It'll be a blurry picture. Yeah. So you, you just kind of use whatever you have, like right out of your pocket, a little LED light from your iPhone. Yeah. I use my iPhone. Some people have a little flashlight, a little pin light. You just use whatever. All right, so this is the A100. Has a double baffle on it. You can see that inside. A lot of times we'll pull this off when it's shooting the sun so we can get a little bit more specular light. But tonight, we're gonna to try something just a little crazier. So this is, um, I'm not sure how many sides this is. Is it eight sides or nine sides? and I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce it. It's a dectahoxagon or something. Anyway, whatever it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collapse. Some of the sides on this. To kind of narrow the beam down a little bit more and turn this into a little bit of a strip box. Now it's not a strip box, it's a quasi strip box, but you can see now we're kind of pulling this down so the light's gonna be a little bit more narrow. We're not gonna try and get the big sides over here, it's a little more narrow light. And uh, probably, yeah, we'll leave those down there. And I have these two going. That one's disconnected, that one's disconnected. Doo -doo -doo. All right, we're kind of on in uneven ground here, so when you set these tri these uh, stands up, put one of the legs in the back, and then what you could do is just go in and grab your foot and just kind of jam it into the soil a little bit to kind of keep it in place. All right, we're gonna try and skim the light in front of Amy. This is our model Amy from Eric Epperly. How you doing, Amy? Hi. So good to see you. Everybody's really tired out to PhotoCon, so bear with us. We're gonna make some magic. It's gonna be a very easy tip you guys can do at night. Look how beautiful she is compared to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go a little bit more towards the edge. There you go, that's perfect. All right, so the shot we're gonna do is we're gonna try and do something a little bit different tonight than most people do. Whenever you do flash photography, you wind up having two exposures, one for your ambient and then one for your flash exposure. And those two are combined. So we're going to drag our shutter tonight really slow to try and create a different light technique, kind of a different flare, if you will, 
with these long lights we have in the background of the boathouse. So you can see these nice long blue lights that we have back there. We're gonna do a shot where those are frozen by using the tripod. And then we're gonna do one where we do some hand holding and we're going to give a different kind of flare to that with the light. So the first thing I wanna do is I just wanna kinda of aim, line my shot up. Now, normally when I'm looking at Amy, let me put on the live view so you guys can see what I'm looking at. Uh, as soon as I figure out what the live view is. Aha, there it is. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see Amy there. Okay, yeah, it's not even showing up. All right, so right down here is Amy. Now, I'm putting Amy's body on the end of these lights because when I do this technique, I don't want this top bar to cut too far into her face when I do the motion, okay? So most people will be on a tripod, they'll flash her, they'll drag the shutter to get the light, but then we're gonna go off tripod and try and do a little bit more artistic style. So the first thing I wanna do is get my base exposure set up for how I want the background to look. And that's pretty easy. Um, one place I like to start with, since we're gonna be on a tripod, and I'm gonna wanna have a long exposure later so that we can manipulate the camera during the exposure. I'm gonna go ahead and start off on ISO 100. Let me get into the menu so you can see what we're doing. Let's see, there we go. ISO 100, we're at 5.6 at a 15th of a second. So if we just take a shot, oh, let's take that over here. You can see we're just basically exposing for the background with behind Amy. Amy obviously is just completely pitch black right now. So go ahead and shine that light on her. Let me try and get a focus. Oh, that's beautiful right there. It is extremely hard to autofocus in darkness. Okay, stay right there for Amy. You're doing great. So now what we're going to do very simply is we're going to take the remote on the S1 and this light has so much power. I really need to turn the power down a lot to start. So I'm gonna go down to three, which is basically like a third of power of this light. Don't quote me, but it's probably 125 watts or somewhere in that near vicinity. So get on here, lock this down, do a test fire, make sure that fires, and then pop a shot and let's look at the exposure. Oh, that doesn't look too bad at all. I think that Amy could probably be a little bit brighter than that. I don't know if you guys can zoom in on that. So all we're gonna do is take the S1, I'm gonna increase it to four, which is gonna give me almost a full stop of light. Take a shot, and that did misfire. That one worked. And still too dark. Let's increase a little bit more. And that's better. Turn up the power a little bit more. Now notice I'm not changing the camera settings. The only thing we're doing is just changing the power of the flash. Turn that up a couple more dots. Now I think that probably looks pretty good. I could probably even turn it down a little bit. So you can see how it's also spilling over the background some. So I'm gonna pull this down just a little bit. And then I'm gonna actually raise the light, slide a little bit further to her side so I can scrape across her and try and minimize hitting the stuff over there. So what I've done is I've taken the light and I've taken it just a little bit further away to Amy's side because I'm trying to minimize that light spilling more on the background. So let's see what we have on here now. I think that looks pretty good. Wow, that looks awesome. Okay, Amy, turn this way for me just a little more. Perfect, good. But your face back towards that light a little bit. Great, chin down, bring your face around that way. That looks perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna need to have another light because my handy light person. <laughs> hey, it's, it's better than nothing. Works like a champ. All right, let's see if that's gonna work. Perfect, love, love that. All right, so you can kind of see the effect we're getting right now. 
All right, so you can see the shot we have of Amy looks really good, but we're gonna go off the tripod to try and do something more artistic. So we're gonna go off the tripod. Now, obviously, if I'm sitting here at a 15th of a second, then I'm gonna blur if I'm hand holding this. The flash will freeze her for that exposure, and then the ambient will blur the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down to a fourth of a second, and I'm actually gonna move the camera during the exposure the flash will freeze Amy, and then what will happen is, if everything works well, instead of having a very small, thin line of light, I'm gonna make a nice wider one, because I'm gonna go up and down. All right, you ready, Amy? All right, here we go. One, two, three. And that's what we get. So now I went up and down so I could make that background light do that change right there. Amy is still lit by the flash, but the light goes that way. We can also do different ones. We can do a little swirl. All right, here we go. Give me a little bit of light on her. You know what? Can you kick that modern light on the back of the S1 and see if that gives us any light? Oh, you know what? I can do it from the, I can do it from here. What am I talking about? I don't think that really did much of anything, did it? There it is. Is it? There's a little bit of light, how about that? I don't know how well that's gonna let me focus. All right, here we go. So we're gonna try and do a little twirly now. Now, if you go too crazy, you'll overlap the exposure of your model or your subject. So you can see you gotta be very careful with the motion so that motion doesn't take your ambient lights and go into your model's face and kind of cuts it out. Unless that's something you're intending. It's all about the art, it's all about your personality and how you want. All right, so here we go, we're gonna try it again. Oh, that's beautiful, I'm so glad that Mon Light is helping. I'm gonna come in a little bit closer, just on her face. That's perfect right there, that's beautiful. Need to have a little bit more drag since I'm a little bit closer to the lights. And you can see how the light is completely changing from a small line into a wide light. So by moving the camera, I'm actually painting with light, but basically backwards. The light's already there. I'm just moving the camera to paint with it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Previous client. So there you go. So when you guys are doing this outside, obviously a good tripod right behind you over here is um, probably one of your best friends when you're doing nighttime photography but the flash is going to freeze the motion it's such a high powerful burst that will freeze the model and then you can just use a slow shutter speed to kind of paint that light they have around them and be creative Hey folks, you're definitely in a treat here. I'm with my good friend Eric Epperly of Eric Epperly Images. You have his model Amy here and just kind of tell us what kind of setup that you have here standing in front of the corner here of this building. What we're going to look at here is we're going to try to get some angles off of the corner with the neon lights that, since they're at an angle and we're going to go down low and shoot up and it's going to create this nice, uh, almost not a 3D look, but it is going to be a tapered off look where she's going to look much taller uh, with the effect. Now you do that from a low angle, maybe wide, you know, low angle right. with a wide angle lens? Wide angle lens, correct. And we're going to set the camera, we're going to set the camera to the lights first on the neon. And then you bring in the light, uh, your fill light, and light her from that. You don't change the camera settings once you get there. All right, we have a nice little setup here with Ron Lane of Lane Images. So uh, kind of tell us you're doing something a little bit more unique with her shirt. Than right. Anything, right? Right, right. I uh, was talking, she has this wonderful looking day glow shirt to it. And I was trying just to get it to pop a little bit. So we've turned down the power a little bit on the flash, trying to run it across her face so we're not hitting the, mm -hmm. the uh, shirt. So we're looking. Sydney, go ahead and look out. And there. 
Okay, so it's kind of skimming. It's not it's, direct, yeah, right? Yeah, the lights, the lights skimming just to get her face, mm -hmm. and it allows that top to just pop, and looks like it's glow, like it's a black light. So, I've, what so, I've done is I've I've lowered the shutter speed down to a fiftieth at five six, raised my ISO a little bit to get a little more exposure mm -hmm. overall, and then just feather the light. It's on my lowest power, one hundred twenty eighth of a power. Now, what kind of diffuser are we working here with? I'm using the uh, the uh, Glow Parapop, 38 inch Octobox, with it has actually two baffles in it. Um, using a light behind it is the uh, Street Light 360 uh, bare bulb. Mm -hmm. Out of that, I'm running it on lo the lowest power, it's 128th of a, or 1/128th of power. Um, firing it with my radio triggers, my Flotix radio radio triggers. Hi there, I'm Jim, and I'm about to photograph Cheyenne. Uh, she's going to do some jumping for me, and I'm going to actually grab motion blur by sh using a, a, sl a slow shutter, and then with flash, freeze her, but actually have some blur behind her. That's what I'm attempting to do. And honestly, to be honest, I've not done this in a very long time. Uh, actually, you may have seen it on the back of your camera by some mistakes you might have made uh, by you know accidentally having your shutter too long and having some camera shake. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to accomplish, but on purpose. Uh, so I'm going to use my remote here on my flat for to fire my flash. I've got my camera remote. Camera's on a tripod, and she's going to jump. She's in some athletic wear. She's going to jump, and we're going to do that. So I'll show you some pictures after this uh, on the back of my camera, possibly on the screen. So what kind of settings are you trying to get? I'm actually uh, shooting at two and a half seconds at f8, I think. Let me check. F11, F11, and so uh, my flash is at 100%. And what's happening is I'm, I'm using the blue lights. The blue lights are actually showing up in the background, so she looks kind of like a ghost in front of it. Uh, the ideal situation probably would be a black background or a dark background so that you don't have any transparency. It looks like they're opaque. Um, so, but anyway, this is what I'm trying right here. I've got a wide angle lens on, 14 to 24, and it looks really cool with this uh, point here at the boathouse. It's really awesome. I, I'm trying to grab you right here in the center. Right here. You know, so if you can just get as close as you can. Just right don't, here. gosh, don't hit that. That is sharp. Okay, we're going to okay. go right here. Yeah, <laughs> that's very sharp. All right, hey everybody. Uh, Jeff Moore here, and we are going to cover uh, the very beautiful and simple practice of bokeh. Everybody is very familiar with bokeh and how to get that nice soft background. So there are some major factors to keep in mind. One of them is to have a lens that has a very nice low f-stop, somewhere around a 2.8 or a 1.8, especially with uh, the 50 millimeter that you can get either with Canon or Nikon. And another one is a good zoom because the zoom also affects the size of the bokeh within the background. So. We have our model, Emily, here, is about ready to go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the shot at 70 millimeters, and I am going to have an aperture of about, see if I can get away with a 5.6 and get a little bit of that background there. So here we go. She's getting it down. And uh, uh, thank you so much, Vanessa. One, two, three. OK, so again, what has happened, of course, is the bug is not very big, but the background is also extremely dark. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring it down to 2.8. Go ahead and focus on her. Thank you. One, two, three. Okay, so as you can see from the previous shot, the background lighting is a little bit bigger. See, there's the 5.6. Of course, she was a little dark. But there we hit her with 2.8 because that's how we expose the lights and the lighting of the bokeh is a little bit bigger. But that is at 70 to uh, 70 millimeters. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to back up and I'm going to frame her just like that first shot. And I'm going to have her at 200 millimeters. And you'll definitely see a difference in the size of the bokeh from here. All right, good. One, two, three. Okay, here we go. Beautiful. So there at 
200 millimeters compared to 70 millimeters. So see the difference that that bokeh has made, the size of that bokeh? So again, that's 200 at 2.8. That was at 70 at 2.8. And then again, that was at 5.6, small bokeh and underexposed. But again, the difference in your bokeh can be the f-stop as well as your zoom. So I would suggest that you kind of work with both while you're experimenting with your bokeh effect. Until then, we just say happy shooting and good luck to you. And with us right now, we have Jen Tiffany of Jen Tiffany Photography, and she is going to show us a simple little trick to kind of make your images a little bit more diverse. What, is, what do we have here? Yeah, so it's really cool. We just have a speed light here with a colored gel on it, just like that. Uh, we have a, our main light over here, and what we're going to do is hide this behind the model and illuminate this light colored wall. It's just a white wall. We're going to illuminate it with this gel flash and turn the wall purple. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, just to kind of give you a lot more options there. Yeah, so you can you, you can do it with or without a gel. Just illuminate the wall, backlight your subject, get some good hair light, or just change the color of the wall. So I'll tell you what, let's capture this puppy. All right. So we have our main light here, and this is our model Amy. And we've got our exposure set for the main light. And I want to show you guys a little bit of a before and after. So we don't have our speed light on the background just yet. All we're going to do is just photograph Amy with the main light. So here is what this looks like. There's no real illumination on the wall, not a whole lot, but Amy looks really good. So now I wanna take this flash and go put it behind her. So now we're gonna take our speed light and we're going to kind of hide it behind the model right in the center of where I'm going to be shooting, which is right about here. That should be good. And then I'm going to pose her to where she's walking it. Or I can adjust, adjust me. Step this way for me just a little bit. Perfect. That looks good. So now let's see what we get. There, see? Now we have a purple wall. Okay, so I'm going to go take the gel off, and then I'm going to point the light at her. I'm going to turn it around, and instead of pointing it at the wall, I'm going to point it at her to get some really pretty hair light. Gorgeous. That's a little bit better. Still a little bit too low. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to give that flash to Robert and have him hold it and just point it at her. That way it's up high where I want it. Because I'm shooting really tight on her, so he's not in my shot at all. Much better. Much better. I would probably make a little bit more adjustment to this because I'm getting kind of a hot spot on the side of her head here. But that backlight is really pretty. Get some good rim light on her arm here. That looks nice. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. Or we can try and put the the purple gel back on there and gel then point hair. it at her. Yeah, and gel, gel her hair, hair a little bit. Gel her hair. 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 I know. Gel her hair. I didn't know you were gonna be a blonde. Get it? Gel her hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see what this looks like. Point it that way a little bit more, because I'm getting a lot on this side of her head. There we go. Perfect. Oh, see, that's really cool. I'm getting a little bit of that in my shot here, because Robert's really, really close. But I think it looks pretty neat. There we go. That's really neat. I like that. Ideally, I think what I would want to do is actually have that speed light on a light stand. Yeah. And because I'm not shooting full length, I can have that, you know, waist height on her pointing right at the back of her head. Because I'm getting a lot of light right here on the side of her head. And that's only because Robert is having to stand camera right just to get out of my shot. But if it could be on a light stand, I could have it right in the middle where I want it and not get so much of it on one side. So that's what we want, that perfect rim light around her, this hair light. 
right in the middle so we're not getting so much of it just on one side of her head. It's just all around her, kind of like a halo. And our main light looks really pretty. I think it's perfect.